Hey, welcome back to Screen Crush. I'm Ryan Airy. So we just saw Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania featuring Jonathan Majors as the MCU's next big bad, Kang the Conqueror. But this is not the first time we met a variant of the character. He Who Remains was also played by Majors in the season finale of Loki. And we see this trend continue in the post credit scene of Quantumania where Majors plays thousands of different variants of Kang. So we're going to break down the Kang variants that we meet in these post credit scenes, who they are, where they came from, and how they connect to He Who Remains and the Sacred Timeline. And what all of this means for Avengers Kang Dynasty and Avengers Secret Wars. So, in the comics, this group of Kangs is known as the Council of Kangs. Oh, they stole that from Rick and Morty. Actually, buddy, it's kind of the other way around. The Council of Kangs has been around since the late 1980s, but more on that in a bit. First up, we've got the Pharaoh himself, Arama Tut. So, in the 30th century, a bored scientist by the name of Nathaniel Richards constructed a time machine that looked like a sphinx. He then traveled back in time to ancient Egypt where he used his genius and advanced technologies to perform his first conquest. This story unfolded in the pages of 1961's Fantastic Four number 19. At the time, the character of Kang did not exist, but the story was later retconned to have Ramatut be a variant of Kang the Conqueror. In the original 61 comic, we see Ramatut escape the Fantastic Four. Ramatut's escape led to an encounter with Doctor Doom. This encounter inspired Ramatut to take on a new persona, the Scarlet Centurion, another Kang variant that we think we may have met in this post credit scene. Now, we're actually not certain that this variant is the Scarlet Centurion. For one, He's not red. He's more of a purpley blue collar, and he's a lot more mechanical. Another possibility is that this is an adult version of Iron Lad, a Kang variant who went down the path of the hero, but later succumbed to his destiny and became Kang the Conqueror. My guess is we'll likely hear this variant simply be referred to as the Centurion. Next, we have the Pope variant of Kang, Immortus. Oh yeah, I did, because he's got tall hat and robes. That's a funny observation, person. I love observational humor. Seinfeld's probably my favorite. I mean, what's the deal with airport food after all? <laughs> okay, so if you're a fan of this channel, you've probably heard us talk about how the He Who Remains variant from Loki was based on a take on the character of Immortus. You see, in the comics, He Who Remains is not a Kang variant at all. He's his own independent character, separate from Kang. He Who Remains resides at the Citadel at the end of time and oversees the TVA, just like in the MCU. But in the MCU, he has a very different design. Instead of a decrepit old man, he looks a lot like Immortus. In fact, concept art from Loki reveals that He Who Remains was indeed based on Immortus' design from the comics. Now Immortus, like He Who Remains, also resides in a place that exists outside of time, a pocket reality known as Temporal Limbo. Another similarity is that Immortus successfully tricked the Council of Kangs into eliminating all other Kangs from the multiverse. This guaranteed that Immortus would become the only Kang variant in existence, similar to how the MCU's He Who Remains has seen to it that he is the only Kang variant in all of existence. Now, before before we move on to all the Kangs we saw in the arena and the Kang variant we met in the second post credit scene, let's talk about this shot of the multiverse and what used to be the sacred timeline. So if you've seen Loki, this is going to look very familiar. In the Loki finale, we were introduced to the concept of the sacred timeline, a series of timelines or universes threaded together like strands of a rope. These timelines run parallel to one another in a circular motion and they happen again and again and again and again because it's supposed to, because it has to. He who remains organized this timeline to not include any Kang variants. Essentially, he burned his variants out of time. I will take my revenge on those who banished me. And I will burn them out of time. Now we've got a video coming out soon on a theory that He Who Remains and the Kang that we met in Quantumania are actually the same variant, but we'll dive into that more in that video. So in this post credit scene, when the Kangs look out into the multiverse, it isn't in a circular form. That's because following the events of Loki, the sacred timeline was destroyed and began to flow into infinite strands of time. This is what allowed for these new Kang variants to come into existence and thus the Council of Kangs. Now we have to remember that from a fourth dimensional viewpoint, all of time unfolds at once. That means that when the sacred timeline began to break, we were witnessing trillions of years of past, present, and future begin to unfold all at once. Meaning that these Kangs didn't just pop into existence, nor are they aware that they were once burned out of existence. And now they, like he who remains, they now have the ability to observe the multiverse from a fourth dimensional perspective. We've speculated before that the TVA, as well as the Citadel at the end of time, could actually exist within the quantum realm, considering that time works very differently down there. Time passes differently here in the TVA. What does that mean? For example, when Ant-Man was trapped in the quantum realm for those five Earth years, he perceived it as only five hours. I'm sorry, that must have been a very long five years. Yeah, but that's just it. For me, it was five hours. So I wouldn't be surprised to learn that He Who Remains, the Council of Kangs, the TVA, all exist within a level of the quantum realm. 
but that wouldn't really explain how they're able to observe the entirety of the multiverse. The quantum realm is essentially a microverse, which is actually what the quantum realm was called in the comics. But I think to observe all of time and reality, you would need to enter what's known as a macroverse or an omniverse, a plane of existence where one can perceive all existing universes and timelines at once. It also reminds me of this scene from Interstellar. Here we see a visual representation of the fourth dimension. It was created by an advanced civilization to help Matthew McConaughey's character save humanity. Every moment, it's infinitely complex. They have access to infinite time and space, but they're not bound by anything. These strands of time we see in Loki and Quantum Mania could merely be a visual representation created by the Kangs to help perceive the multiverse that they oversee. Think of it like a computer. Before modern computers, computer screens displayed lines of code, and we, the user, had to input different commands to operate it. But then came the graphical user interface, or GUI. This gave the user a visual representation of the complexities of the computer, making it to where we can view multiple programs at once and have an easier access and control of the machine. The same could be said for these strands of time. The interface gives us a more simplistic understanding of the inner workings of the multiverse and how the Kangs control it. Yeah, 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 computers and stuff. Talk about the arena for the Kangs. Right, the arena. As Ramata, the purpley blue centurion, and Immortus enter this arena, we see thousands of Kang variants teleporting in. We hear the centurion ask, how many did you call? To which Immortus replies, all of us. Now, you'll notice that these Kang's portal tech looks a lot like Reed Richards in the Multiverse of Madness, as well as the TVA portal tech that we saw in Loki. This makes sense because, in the comics, Nathaniel and Reed share a common ancestor. Now, several of these Kangs have purple robes, which are similar to that of He Who Remains. In fact, for a second, I thought this variant was He Who Remains. This Kang looks an awful lot like Prime Kang from the comics. This one is wearing a modern business suit, so he could be a Kang variant called Mr. Griffin, the CEO of Kang Enterprise. Oh, he's the guy who bought Avengers Tower. Right. At the void at the end of time in Loki, we see Avengers Tower, except instead of an Avengers A, it has Q-E-N-G, meaning that it may have been Mr. Griffin who purchased Avengers Tower back in Spider-Man Homecoming. But wait, during Spider-Man Homecoming, Mr. Griffin wouldn't have existed because he who remains wiped all Kang variants from time and he was still alive and controlling the sacred timeline. That's right. Unless part of he who remains' his history includes being Mr. Griffin. And then perhaps he was allowed to exist within the sacred timeline. But but now with time splintering off into different timelines and universes, we could see multiple variants similar to Mr. Griffin, just like there are multiple variants similar in appearance to King the Conqueror and He Who Remains. Person, th this is really confusing. My little head hurts. I am very small. Don't worry, buddy. I got a new guy down in the basement trying to work it all out. Stupid new guy. Yeah, I don't like him either. Then we get this classic shot pulled directly from the pages of 1988's Avengers 292. Now, this council is actually the Council of Cross Time Kangs, which features people who have defeated Kang, or Nathaniel Richards to be more specific, and now have taken on the moniker of Kang. That explains why we see different species in Kang attire. But I'm not sure why we're seeing different species as Kangs in this post credit scene. It's been pretty well established that all the Kangs in the MCU are variants of the same person and Nathaniel Richards, and he's a human. However, it's possible that Kang variants who traveled back in time have created timelines with very different figures than the ones that they originally came from. This means that we could see universes where Nathaniel Richards came into being in a very different looking environment. This could include a timeline where humanity evolved very differently than we're used to. But if humanity never evolved, wouldn't that just mean that Nathaniel Richards wouldn't exist in that timeline? I mean, not necessarily. We've seen that variants of the same being can have very different physical appearances, like Peter 1, 2, and 3 in Spider-Man No Way Home. Heck, Peter 1 even has web shooters inside his arms. The Loki series also showed us that Loki has variants of different races, sexes, and even species. So there could just as easily be a Nathaniel Richards that came to be as a different species. Kraka Kang. <laughs> And then comes the second post credit scene where we meet yet another variant of Kang, Victor Timely. And this scene looks like it's pulled directly out of Loki Season 2. Now, in the comics, Victor Timely is a variant of Kang who traveled back in time to the early 20th century following an embarrassing defeat. He then created the town of Timely, Wisconsin. Here, he became the mayor and established an impressive and innovative workforce, rapidly advancing the technology of their time. He's got a real Thomas Edison vibe about him. Thomas Edison, he's the man to get us into this century. Now, we have a video coming out soon discussing how the MCU's Victor Timely may in fact be the same Kang the Conqueror from Quantumania. Following his defeat, where he was sucked into the power core, we think that he could have landed back in time and now has disguised himself as Victor Timely. Wait, so he escaped the quantum realm? That's right, but he's got an uphill battle if he's going to escape the 20th century. But more on that in our upcoming video. So, let us know, did you spot any Kangs in the arena that you recognize from the comics, and which of these Kangs do you hope to see in the next MCU film? Let me know down in the comments below or add us on Twitter. And if it's your first time here, please subscribe and smash that bell for alerts. For Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy.